Hey everyone, it's Matt Williams, Mr. MPW. Welcome to today's video where we're gonna be taking a look at the drone gold rush and has that drone gold rush finally come to an end? This video is proudly sponsored by UAVhub.com, connecting you to the heart of the drone industry. Hey everyone, so big one today, I think, and uh, kind of time to address the elephant in the room in a way for the whole of the industry. Um, it's something that I know a lot of people have been talking about for a long time. People have been asking the question over and over again. That's why we're addressing it here. Not necessarily of us, but I think it's just the underlying sentiment. It's the underlying, you know, kind of thoughts and feelings amongst everyone in the uh, drone community at the moment. And that really comes down to, has there been a drone gold rush? And has that gold rush been and gone? And are the only people now who are going to make money in the drone industry, those people who are selling the spades to the gold prospectors? I don't know. Um, it's one of those, you know, and we're getting a lot of this flack, I suppose, in a way now, because especially with being the first RE, the first recognised assessment entity to be qualified by the CAA to deliver the new drone courses, the A2CFC, the, um, the GVC, that General Visual Line of Sight certificate, a lot of people directing their, I suppose, frustration in a way towards us. Um, and we saw that uh, uh, quite a lot of this in on from the whole industry um, over the last couple of years, not just ourselves, but all of the NQEs. You know, you guys are the only people making money in the training world. And that might well have been true potentially to a degree, but I think a lot of that comes down to things that we've talked about before on the channel where people don't approach this as a business. They think, I'm going to buy a drone, I'm going to get a website, I'm going to get myself up and running with a PFCO as it was and, you know, an operational authorization as it will be or an A2 CFC. And they then think, oh, I'm going to make a load of money. I'm going to make a mazillion pounds and be rich and never have to work again. And like any business, you have to work at it. You have to work out how you're going to generate leads. You have to work out how you're going to nurture those leads. You have to work out how you're going to take those leads and turn them into customers. How are you then going to delight them? How we... And again, it doesn't matter, it seems, how many times we've told people this over the years, they just don't seem to grasp it. And, you know, a long time ago, the options disappeared of getting a drone, getting a PFCO, getting a website and making money. You have to work at this as a business. And now I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are making a reasonable part-time income probably paying for the, you know, the costs of being able to go and do this cool thing. Um, there are some people who are doing it properly and making a good amount of money. Not those many, I wouldn't suggest, though, that are making more than they would do in their normal job. But has that kind of created a gold rush? Did it create a gold rush? And I think, yes, it did. You know, there were those people, those innovators at the beginning, those very early adopters who came into the industry. And I suppose ourselves were kind of, we fell under that bracket, right? We started off flying cameras under big model helicopters when no one else was doing it. Therefore, you know, we were at the bleeding edge of the technology. It cost us a lot of money to implement these ideas, to create these solutions in the first place. And if I'm honest, the delivery probably wasn't that good. There was a lot of vibration and all that sort of stuff because particularly compared to now with the stabilization systems that we've got and the technology that we've got nowadays, but it was the best that anyone was doing and it worked really well for us. But then you're into a place where that adoption of the technology drops off. And this is a well-known phenomena though. This is nothing new. If you look at the technology adoption life cycle, okay, there is, there are a set of peaks and troughs in there. And I think we, it's quite interesting looking at where we are in that cycle at the moment. We had the innovators and I would class ourselves within that. We then had the early adopters, the second stage in that where, you know, the tech trigger came along, everybody adopted drones. They thought they were gonna make millions and that was great. And then after that early adoption phase, there's something known as the chasm. There's a gap in that adoption where, people become very dis disillusioned. They become disenfranchised with what's going on. And that all of a sudden creates what's known as the trough of illusion, uh, disillusionment. I'm losing all my words today. Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold going on. The trough of disillusionment. And that's when things turn negative. People say, oh no, the tech's not as good. The, the regulations can't keep up. And I think that's probably where we are at the moment, if I'm honest. We're seeing a lot of negativity still, quite a bit of toxicity. Not as bad as it was, interestingly, in the summer of last year, 2019, when there was a lot of toxicity in the industry. 
I think a lot of those people who were that disillusioned, that were that disenfranchised with it all, have probably actually departed the fix. They've left the industry and maybe they'll come back and it'd be great to see some of them come back. But I think those ones who thought they were getting in as early adopters, they were in that gold rush um, period where you know, they thought there was going to be a lot of work around. They thought that by adopting the tech, they were going to get loads of loads of work and loads of business. And it just didn't work. So we're in that trough of disillusionment now. And we're trying to bridge that gap, bridge that chasm. And do you know what? I think the changes to the, the regulations couldn't have come at a worse time, but also couldn't have come at a better time. The changes to the regs that are coming in July couldn't have come at a worse time in a way because we're in that decline now of people adopting the technology. We're in that place where, you know, millions of drones, hundreds of thousands of drones in the UK were sold two Christmases ago. This Christmas, not many sold at all from what we can tell from the kind of empirical evidence that, well, the anecdotal evidence, I should say, um, that's available. And certainly we've seen those drone sales decrease over the last 18 months or so. But as I say, kind of, we've been double whammied, right? We're in that trough of disillusionment, people realizing that the gold rush is over at the moment, people not buying drones, people not adopting the tech, the industry becoming quite toxic, the regulations changing and people going, what, this is mind blowing, all the regulations are changing, this makes no sense, the CAA are gonna destroy it and the regulators got rid of any opportunity that we had. But then actually, if you look at it, I think the timing couldn't really have been better at the same time because where there is that chasm in the technology adoption life cycle, and uh, we'll try and put a picture of that up if we can find a non-copyrighted image of it, um, where there is that chasm and that gap between the early adopters and then the early majority, which is the next phase in, and there's a gap between the two, actually I think the new regulations coming in where you don't have to have a qualification to be able to operate commercially, couldn't then have come at a better time because whilst people are becoming disenfranchised, people are becoming disillusioned with the fact that you can't make money in the drone industry, all of a sudden then, the barriers to entry of the regulations, the barriers to entry of needing a permission for commercial operation as you do at the moment, disappear. So actually, that in itself, the new framework, when it comes in, when people get their head around the change in methodology that that's created, that's then gonna, I think, lead to a massive uptake again in people buying drones and that in turn is going to mean a massive uptake in well hopefully a huge increase in the manufacturers creating new aircraft because they're starting to see their aircraft being sold again we then go on to what's known as the slope of enlightenment in the technology adoption life cycle when the early majority actually start to then adopt the technology and i think that's when we're going to see you know companies then media companies, surveying companies, inspection companies, starting to adopt this technology, embrace it properly for what it is. And the novelty will have worn off of drone, you know, photos and video. There will still be a demand for that in the higher echelons, I think, but it's gonna become more of an everyday item. It's gonna become more of an everyday tool which is what we've always said it's going to be, for collecting data in a safer way, with less risk, with more efficiency, with less cost involved, bringing costs down overall for businesses and helping them to flourish. You know, when you see the surveyors, for example, who are able to potentially go out and do some ground truthing, but if you can then fly a huge area and get millions of survey points, that if you can then qualify that data, um, whether it's an RTK system, a PPK system, you put some ground control points out and you can then qualify that data set, you know, you can collect huge swathes of data very quickly, very time efficiently, which would have taken days, weeks, or even months to collect if you weren't using that. So I think that's where we are at the moment. We're in this coming towards the end of the chasm, and I think when the new regs come out, we'll jump into that early majority uptake. Um, and yes, there probably will be slightly fewer people in the industry, but it'll be more sustainable. Um, then once you move out of the early majority into the late majority, when you still see quite a lot of uptake, um, and then you're into what's known as the plateau of productivity in the technology adoption life cycle, which I think we'll look at in a couple of years' time. I had an interesting conversation a couple of um, days ago, actually, with someone saying, you know, are we in a place where the industry isn't mature yet, although it feels like it is to some people, and are we five to ten years away from any realistic major investment being bought into the industry? And 
I, I have to say, I, I think I kind of agree with that. You know, we're at the bleeding edge of the tech. We're moving through this technology adoption, adoption life cycle very, very quickly in the drone industry. So I think there will be an element of lag compared to the normal technology adoption life cycle, which shows that, you know, in three to five years time, that's when we'll see the full benefits of drone tech, you know, and it's going to take us as a community, us as an industry to pull together to work within the new frameworks that the regulator have given us, that the CAA are giving us, and convince people that drones can be used safely, that they can be used for good. And this drones for good message is really, really important. Um, and use it as a professional piece of technology moving forwards. So there we go. I think it's one of those, you know, like I say, the, the drone gold rush has been and gone now potentially. We have to work together to get across this chasm in the technology adoption life cycle, get everyone onto this slope of enlightenment and really make people realize that, you know, especially things like the local councils who we've seen putting more and more um, restrictions on drone operations. Let's work together, everybody, and pull together as a community and prove to people that, you know, we are bigger and better than those that were joining the industry for the gold rush, hoping to make some coin in the short term. And, you know, drones can be used for good. Interested to hear your thoughts on this, though. Please drop those those down in the comments below. Like I say, we'll try and get a non-copyright version of the technology adoption lifecycle, for those of you who haven't seen that before, so that you can think, rather than thinking, what on earth is Matt on about? He's lost it. You can see where we're at. And hopefully, you know, let us know what your thoughts are. Where do you think we are in this life cycle? What are your thoughts on the gold rush and where we sit now? If you want to know more about, you know, how to build the successful business, we've got loads of stuff on the channel. Please go back and look at that. We're bringing it back all, you know, bringing these themes up all the time. Let us know what you'd like to see and what you'd like to hear about, what would help you the most um, so that we can keep bringing that content to you. Don't forget to follow us on all the social channels. Again, it's great to see all of those growing all the time. Give the video a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one. Fly safe, blue skies.